I'd like to welcome Adam today from Clever Mariner. He lives on his boat and he works from his boat and he has a very interesting take about internet on board, including Starlink and some of its shortcomings. Adam, you live on your boat full time, you work from it, a privilege 435 catamaran. How did that happen? How did it come to be? My wife and I, uh, Angie, my, my co-captain, um, we had bought this boat about eight years ago with the intention of you know, someday either taking a sabbatical or some, you know, some time off or what have you. And, um, you know, at least six months, maybe a year. And uh, we didn't have a plan, though. We had no plan. You know, I think it was kind of Octo late October uh, time frame. You know, and she looks at me and she goes, I don't want to do this. And I'm like, what are, you, what are you talking about? She's like, this, this whole, I don't want to be here in the city with everything shut and it's getting dark early. You know, up there it gets dark at 4.15 in the afternoon in the middle of winter um, and everything was still closed. So um, she said, she looked at me and she said, said let's, let's put this boat in the water and let's, let's go. We'll figure it out as we go. So we did. We put it in the water and we just, you know, went, went south and, you know, started building a, a, a wireless Internet system on the way. Um, and, uh, you know, the rest. And then, and then it's been about four years now that we've been doing this. And, you know, the whole goal uh, that she set, she set our what is our, our North Star and our North Star is 70 degrees. She said, you know, if, if it gets too cold, go north. And if it gets too or if it gets too hot, go north. And if it gets too cold, go go south. So we've been doing that for for about four years now. Wow. I mean, that, that's awesome. I see palm trees in the background. Are you still in Miami right now? No, we're actually in Marathon, Florida, and uh, we're, we're at a rare marina. We usually stay on the hook, you know, most of the time. But uh, we, uh, this is a little community that we've made some friends in, and um, we were able to stay here for a month, which was good because, you know, not having an address for months at a time and doing uh, boat repairs is, is it's very challenging sometimes. So, so we got a home base for a bit. I had some work travel. My wife had some work travel. Um, so it was nice to have a home base for, for a couple of weeks, but we'll be, we'll be headed down to, uh, Key West next. And then the dry Tortugas after to spend a couple of weeks. Nice. Nice. So, um, I guess one of the biggest reasons I wanted to talk to you today is because a lot of people are working from their boats now. It's just a, a sort of a natural thing. And Starlink was kind of a game changer for people that want to work remotely, especially people on boats. Um, tell us about um, your Starlink, sort of how you got it set up and, and how you find Starlink to be from the boat. Yeah. So we were like kind of a little bit of a late adopter of, of, of Starlink. You know, a lot of folks that we were meeting when we were cruising, they had, you know, the RV dish, like the version one, and they were, they were playing with it. I mean, the problem for me was, you know, we have to have something like when we when we're working from boat, I mean, we're, we're trying to simulate the same thing as if we're working from home. So you know, you can't be showing up to a, a board meeting or an executive meeting or something like that and saying, oh, my Internet's cutting out. Sorry, I'll get back to you in, in 30 seconds. Right. It has to be s seamless. You know, we're already I think there, there's still already a decent amount of judgment for working from both. You know, there's the, that that that. Oh, it must be nice. You're working from your yacht. Yeah. Right? And really, you know, it, it shouldn't have to matter where we're working if we're if we're working from home. So there, there's that's still a little touchy. So. You know, if we're having internet outages and it's uh, and and because we're at sea, like that's going to be a problem. So, because of Starlink's fuzzy rules and the rules kept changing over the years, you know, I just wasn't comfortable relying on that. All of a sudden, they could change the rules and go up. Oh, you can't use it anywhere in the ocean, and then we'd have nothing, right? Then, then what are we going to do? You know, I can't. Yeah. And if they turned it off one day, right, or sent me one of those, you know, threat letters, and yeah. then we're out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you know, and then I have to go to work the next day. What am I, what am I going to do? Take a day off because I've got to get, you know, sail 40, 50 miles to get to, uh, you know, to figure out what we're going to do next. So, so we adopted kind of late. Um, and when I decided to jump in, it was when, uh, the, you know, the mobile dish was out or the mobile plans were out, you know, it was like kind of the third iteration of the mobile plans. Uh, the high power dish was at, was out so that, um, you know, we kind of had a little bit more reliability and less drops and, you know, actually, I think you can you can see it sitting up there on the yeah. um so so we did jump in and it has been great you know compared to what we were using before it has been great um we find that there are there are some issues that you know which is why our system is more complicated than just the starlink but you know some of the issues are uh speed drops you know kind of a little bit randomly like because the high power dish we really don't lose connectivity we always have some sort of connectivity but if you want really you know video quality internet 
um, we, we see a couple of drops throughout the day where, you know, and, I, and I've really tried to get a, a picture of it on a speed test, but it, but it happens pretty quickly. But it'll drop down to that like three, you know, megabit down um, and, you know, same or lower for the uplink uh, for upload. And wow. that's wow. enough to, especially if we have, we might have two, anywhere from two to four people on the boat at, on video at any point. And, you know, you start going down to those speeds, everybody's video gets interrupted for, you know, 20, 30 seconds. Um, and that, that becomes a problem. So, so there are, there definitely are some hiccups. And the other hiccup is if we're in a populated area, like, you know, we, we just saw each other in Miami, which is great. And, uh, but Starlink terrible in Miami, um, because of congestion, you know, the, the, right. the more populous the area, the, the slower it's going to be. So it, it was totally unreliable, uh, in Miami. So it's really hard to, to relate, you know, you kind of have to have multiple sources of, of high quality internet. Yeah, yeah, that kind of leads me to my third question is you found Starlink to be good, but not quite good enough. Um, tell us about in your quest for sort of redundancy and uh, consistency. What did you do next? How did you augment this? We, we were uh, we, we were able to do things that we just we just weren't able to even fathom before. I mean, we were out in the in the mangroves between Johnston Key and the you know, Snipes Point area. Um, middle of nowhere, beautiful spot, white sandy beaches, did a little fishing, you know, only saw two boats for the, for the whole week that we were there. Um, you know, we had the place to ourselves and that's where Starlink really shines. I mean, no congestion, obviously. And we had, you know, we were able to work from the boat, um, you know, had streaming bit Netflix and whatever, like we were acting like we we're in a house, you know, but we we're in the middle. If you, if you looked at our background, it looked like it was a, a zoom background, you know, yeah. we, were, we were in the middle, beautiful spot. Um, and, you know, I get very inspired working from places like that. Um, you know, some people say, oh, how, how are you not distracted all the time? I, to me, it's, it's you know, the tranquility and, you know, there's a certain amount of inspiration. Like, like I'm influenced by my surroundings, I think, and, and, and how that portrays in my, in my leadership and, and you know, the way I work. So really loved it. Um, but, you know, so, so it's great for, for, for things like that to be able to kind of forge new paths. But, you know, coming back, um, into a city, which, you know, obviously we're going to, to be in every once in a while. Um, you know, we've, we found that it's quite unreliable. So we've added, um, we've added some extra ways to mix cellular, cellular, uh, LT and 5g signal into our setup. Um, and the way we've done that is with a, uh, a peplink, uh, router. This is actually our second iteration. We started with a peplink, um, max transit cat 18. And, and uh, there, was, there was some problems with that, but I'll get to that in a second. But, but essentially, the reason that we have this, this router, this mobile router, um, is one, it is a built-in mobile router, just kind of like you have at home, but it also is a cellular modem, right? So instead of your cable modem, you have, you know, one or two um, SIM cards, like that you would put in your phone to receive okay. cellular signal. Now, the brilliance that this device has is it also has built-in something called the the speed fusion vpn okay and in simplest terms what it does is it's able to take multiple internet sources right so let's say your starlink let's say you know carrier one uh verizon and in the, if, if you're watching this in the u.s uh verizon and say at&t right um or a you know my fi device or or your uh, a marina's wi-fi for instance it can take those and through this speed fusion tech that they have it basically and I'm, of course i'm going to be oversimplifying this quite a bit um, um because you know to be honest i'm not even 100 percent sure how it works <laughs> but <laughs> it blasts so when you're sending out signal it blasts it to every one of those um different carriers uh, different internet sources and then it pieces back together the best the best things that it gets back right yeah. so it really increases the stability of your internet connection and it's doing that all automatically as you go right now um, i have what's called the peplink uh, max br1 pro 5g yeah that's the uh, pretty sure it's max br1 pro 5g which is great so this box it does all of this stuff for you you don't have to really think about it it'll just it just handles it is it also a wireless router or do you have to have a router behind it yeah, it is. It is also a wireless router, right? So it's similar to like your wireless router at home. Um, now we found here's you, you kind of touched on one of the other problems. So so um, with cellular signal, and and you can actually uh, see back here some of my antennas that I have set up, and I think I'm not looking at the screen perfectly, but 
Um, so with cellular signal, the distance from your antennas to the device really matters because the signal degrades very quickly in wire, right? So I had to put my device actually mounted in that aft, in the aft compartment under the bench back here. Um, and that means my Wi-Fi signal for the whole boat is also coming from there. Okay. So that, you know, seems great. Like normally Wi-Fi signal will, will, you know, last 30, 40, 50 feet, right? Without too much of a problem. And most boats are below that size. Uh, well, boats have a tendency to have a lot of stuff, concentration of stuff in the middle, especially metal things. And signal hates metal things. So I found that with where the location of my unit was, if I was in the forward, um, uh, the master stateroom, which I happen to like to work in quite a bit, my signal was 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 cutting out. So I had to actually add a peplink, uh, uh, an additional peplink wireless access point, as a as a mesh network, which is something that peplink can can do with its own devices, um, which essentially bounces and and the signal over to midship and is able to give me a much broader range of coverage. So of course I didn't want to have to add that extra device, but you can run it off 12 volt power. It uses you know it sips power. Um, so does the uh, so does the router. So uh, but but now I mean you know we've got enough coverage that sometimes I can even get good quality signal from from the beach. I'm you know sitting on the beach working from the working from the Wi-Fi from my you know boat that I can see in the distance is kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, man, you're living the life. It's 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 <laughs> awesome how you figured out how to do this and this Peplink product. Uh, that's not somebody that pays you or anything like that's just what you found is the best solution to the problem, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not sponsored by them uh, by any means, you know. And, and and I think it's it's actually pretty, you know, it's it's pretty common um, for folks to have a peplink these days, you know, both for RVs and for boats. If you really, you know, and the question is, when you're designing your setup, like, what is it that you really need? You know, if we weren't if we weren't um, really aiming for video quality, you know, seamless video quality internet, nobody can tell whether we're on a boat, at a, at a house, in a hotel, whatever. But, you don't need all of this, right? You don't need you don't need the wireless access point. You don't need the Peplink router. You can get away with just Starlink in a lot of cases, and just know that you know when you go into cities, your signal is probably going to suck. But that could probably that could be fine because you know then you can just run um, you know a uh, you know have a good a good cell phone plan, run off your hotspot, you know up upgrade your hotspot data, which is like ten dollars a month now. It used to be insanely expensive, um, but of course since we want to make sure that we have redundancy and all that stuff. We also upgraded our hotspots just in case, you know, but yeah, I mean, you could get away with the Starlink and your hotspot when you're in a city, just use your hotspot. Um, so I think, I think this, this complicated setup is really for those that are going to be considering working from, uh, working from the boat full time and are expected to be on camera. pretty often. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, you figured it all out. I think for a lot of people that are, are curious because they're moving onto a boat and they're going to be working professionally. So, um, great information. Uh, it was really, really good to have you on. Um, I'm looking forward to talking to you about all the other stuff that you do and more videos like this so that uh, you can share the, the knowledge that you've been able to acquire. Yes, yeah, Tim, thanks for having me. You know, this is, this is fun. I mean, I, I think, uh, one, I'm, I'm a big tinker. So, you know, I really like experimenting with this stuff. And if you give me the opportunity to, to, to nerd out and talk about it for a little bit, I'm happy to do it. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's the practical sailor way is, uh, is we figure out the best way and share it. Absolutely, man. Awesome. Great talking to you, Adam. Thanks so much. You too, Tim. If you guys want to see more from Adam, head over to his site, clevermariner.com. He goes into a lot of detail about all the big decisions that he's had to make aboard his catamaran. And let us know in the comments what you guys think of Starlink on boats and what other interviews you'd like to see practical sailor do with real live industry professionals, people in the know, what questions do you have? We'll be reading the comments and I'll see you guys next week.